Hi, I'm Jason Mears and I'm a lead architect and CTO ambassador at VMware. Uh, and I'm going to do a quick run through of VMware's vision and strategy in 2020. This is going to be a slightly more detailed version of a previous video I recorded. Uh, and in this version of the video, which is going to be a little bit longer, we're going to talk in more detail about individual products, uh, individual acquisitions, and what they're used for and how they fit in with the overall strategy. So I started my previous video talking about the fact that we had this VMware vision to run any application on any device from any cloud with intrinsic security and that the analysts at, at uh, VMworld 2019 had basically made a, a comment or a statement about VMware finally having the you know this vision or this strategy for running um, traditional applications and cloud native applications on a single platform with consistent infrastructure and consistent operations. And I, I mentioned in the previous video that it was a little bit of a surprise to us because up until about 2013, VMware had just been talking about a software-defined data center. But in mid-2013, 2014, the new strategy was announced or released around any application on any device from any cloud or one cloud as we called it at the time. So that was in 2013, 2014. Um, it was a similar message in 2016 and 2017. Again, a similar message in 2018 with, again, any application, any device, or any cloud. The message is the same. The graphics have changed slightly, but it's still the same vision and strategy. Um, all the way to we get to VMworld 2019, where, again, same message, same vision, same strategy. The only thing that's really changed is that the capability has grown. So we haven't changed what we believe in or what we think is going to be, you know, what organizations need going forward. We've just bolstered our portfolio and added to our capability in all of these areas. And you'll see on that um, diagram or that slide there, there's, there's now a new interesting things like telco and edge and hybrid. So before it was just a public and private thing that people talked about. Now hybrid is being talked about more and edge and telco. And the, the telco on there is really more to do with the 5G rollout, which is going to be the largest network build out in, in probably in our lifetimes where um, the telco companies have decided not to ship physical equipment into cell towers or cellular towers anymore. They'll put everything on a VMware hypervisor and updates will all be software defined in future. So they'll update software, not replace hardware. So that's why there's a, a specific call out to telco there. Um, so really what VMware have been doing is abstracting away complexity. So we go from a simple hypervisor to running something like vSphere and vCenter where we now are aiming at a platform. We put applications on a platform, not a server. And at this point, we don't care which server it's running on. It's just running on vSphere and vCenter. We then move along a little bit to software-defined data center. And now we can stretch that not only just between servers, but between different data centers um, and across wide area networks. So we now don't care which data center our applications and services are running from. Take that a step even further when we introduce things like hybrid cloud and public cloud. Once we get into multi-cloud, we don't even care if it's in a data center or a cloud provider, never mind which country or location that data center or cloud provider is in. So that's the evolution of, of what we've done. And the focus really gets less and less on technology and more and more on applications. So this diagram shows the same thing again, or this slide, I should say. It shows you know a very hardware and techie focused. We're then looking at, um, with the vSphere web client, we're now talking about managing servers and sites. And then when we get to SDDC manager, we're talking about managing infrastructure and operations. And then when we get to things like VMware Cloud Console and Tanzu Mission Control, we're actually managing the, just the delivery and app of applications and services to end users and customers from anywhere. This is this, any app on any device from any cloud. We are now more focused on delivering applications and services than any of the underlying technology underneath. It's a given that ja that just needs to work and that just needs to be available. So this any cloud, any app, any device, um, you'll see all our messaging going forward for that um, any cloud, any app, any device, you know, kind of falling down or cascading down into one of five categories. And that will be products and services that focus more on building of applications and application catalogs. Um, other parts that focus on the running 
of applications and services, whether that be in virtual machines or containers, or wh and whether that's orchestrated by vCenter or Kubernetes or any other desired state configuration or desired state management tool. Um, a focus on managing all these application services across multiple different data centers and clouds, but doing it from a single pane of glass or a single source of truth. Uh, being able to connect all of these things together. So this is things like um, um, hybrid networking, so networking between data center and clouds, even if the data centers and clouds are from different vendors. Um, that's also with some of the more cloud native applications that even touches on things like service mesh, which manages the networking and the performance of the network between, mic uh, between uh, microservices. And then we've also got the protect, so providing a consistent level of security and governance across all our applications and services, again, regardless of where they're running from, which data center, which cloud provider, which platform. So that's that consistent view across there. So this is the slide I'm going to spend a little bit more time on, because I'm going to spin this out a little bit. So what we've got there um, under the build is uh, Heptio. So basically Heptio is a, is a company um, that's all about Kubernetes. So we acquired this company in 2018, along with two out of the three original creators of Kubernetes. So two of the three original guys who created Kubernetes at Google, Joe Bader and Craig McLuckie, formed Heptio. Uh, and provided a, an enterprise grade way of running Kubernetes at scale and that's a company we acquired in 2018 and now is part of our container and Kubernetes strategy. Um, next one there is PKS um, which is a managed Kubernetes service that can be on-premise or it can be in, in cloud so PKS is that name for that managed service so whether you want to build it but you want support for it or you want somebody else to build it and support it for you PKS is a, is a term or a, a concept there that can be used for that so there are a few different flavors of PKS next one is Bitnami so Bitnami or Bitnami is an enterprise application catalog or application store that's built for the cloud uh, that was another acquisition in 2018, but you can think of it as an app store for the cloud or data centers where you pick an application and it worries about how to deliver that to a particular data center or cloud provider or platform, but giving you that simplicity that people have got used to with an app store. Um, next thing on there is Pivotal, again a company that you probably know for doing Pivotal container service, so again Pivotal is a, another of those acquisitions, an interesting one because Pivotal was originally part of VMware, was spun out, was uh, owned by Dell and then uh, uh, acquired or brought back in to VMware again. So. Again, just showing just how far this uh, container container base has come forward because um, containers just becoming more and more important going forward and Kubernetes becoming more and more important coming forward. So that's, the, that's essentially the build stuff. We then move on to run. So obviously vSphere is the hypervisor. It's the market leading hypervisor for over 20 years. vSAN is VM's software defined storage product. So it gives you enterprise storage features, but just using commodity servers and storage devices. So again, you know, kind of enterprise grade performance and, and management and, you know, kind of manageability, but using, you know, commodity drives and servers. Um, next thing on there from, uh, I've stuck that down as um, virtual GPU. So um, quite often GPUs are used for things like um, machine learning and artificial intelligence. So we did an acquisition of a company called Bitfusion in 2019, and that allows graphics cards or GPUs in one server to be used in other servers as if they're locally installed. So if you imagine wanting to add an artificial intelligence or machine learning type capability, but your existing platform uses things like blade servers, which are too small to put uh, GPUs in, or maybe the GPUs get too hot to put in them, or just that your servers have, have all got, already got other things in and there's no room for GPUs. This would allow you to buy a small number of additional servers, put GPUs in those, but abstract those GPUs so they appear to be in other servers. So it's almost a way of virtualizing GPU or the power of a GPU and making it appear in another server or another virtual machine or another container. So again, that was uh, Bitfusion and acquisition in 2019. Next one is VMware Cloud Foundation. So this is essentially a bundle of vSphere, vSAN, NSX and STDC Manager. So vSphere provides software defined compute vSAN provides software-defined storage, 
NSX provides software defined networking and security and SDDC manager is the tool that you use for managing patching and updating all of those things together so next thing on that list is uh, VMC and AWS so this is a, a VMware managed cloud that sits on Amazon web services so VMware manage it on AWS hardware in the AWS data center so just to be clear on that it's AWS hardware in an AWS data center, but it's managed by VMware and AWS together. But it's a it's a managed service in AWS managed by VMware. Um, another interesting one here, which kind of breaks lots of people's um, view on this public and private type thing, um, because VMC on Dell EMC is another VMware managed cloud on Dell EMC hardware. But the difference here is it's a managed cloud service but the Dell hardware is located in your own building on premise. So you consume it like a cloudy service and you pay for it like a cloudy service, but Dell put the hardware inside your building so you get all those benefits of performance and, and better, you know, or, or lower latency. Um, interesting one, you see more about that in 2020. Next one is VCPP or VMware Cloud Provider Program. So this is where um, a partner or a VMware partner takes the VMware software stack and installs it on their own hardware in their own data center and then resells that as a service to an end user or a customer. So there's currently just over 4,300 VMware VCPP partners um, offering services worldwide. And you may have seen in a previous uh, video that in total, um, with the VMware Managed Cloud and the VMware Cloud uh, Provider Program, um, we now run over 10,000 data centers worldwide with VMware Cloud products. And that's t that in, in numbers of data center rather than size, but in pure numbers of data center, VMware now have more data centers running their cloud platform than Amazon, um, Azure, uh, or Microsoft, Google, and IBM combined. So moving on to the managed stack, we've got vCenter Server. It's a central point of management for VMware products. Um, people have been using this for years and years. It's, it's the place where VMware administrators do their administration. Next thing in there is SDDC Manager, or Software Defined Data Center Manager. And using this tool, you can deploy, provision, patch, and update entire data centers with one tool. Um, it can also be used to create multi-tenant workload domains. So if you have one piece of hardware that you want to carve out into separate um, domains for customers or multi-tenant workload domains, that's the tool that you can use for that um, as well. So there are other ways of doing that. This is just the SDDC manager makes it very simple. Next thing in there is the vRealize suite. Uh, this is a suite of products for managing things like health, risk, efficiency, waste, compliance, cost, cost comparison, doing things like log correlation, root cause analysis, automation, blueprints for applications and services, self-service and IT service catalog. Um, as I say, it's a suite. It covers a whole host of products. Um, probably too many to cover in this uh, in this video alone. Um, Next thing there is Workspace ONE, and this is all about application delivery. So whether it's what we used to call, um, or we used to refer to more often as VDI, uh, Virtual desktop, infra uh, des desktop Infrastructure, things like application publishing, things that you would normally associate with things like terminal services and Citrix, um, you know, that's the, that's the horizon part of the product. Uh, remote desktop or remote desktop services, application packaging, so things like app volumes and thin app, application layering, mobile device management, desktop and laptop, laptop management. Um, lots of people using this as an alternative to things like SCCM because we're starting to manage desktops uh, and laptops more like mobile devices or more like um, smartphones and tablets than devices that are permanently kept inside the building and connected to an active directory. Um, it also does things like single sign-on and identity management. So Workspace ONE is an entire, uh, again, suite of products and tools the idea behind Workspace ONE is we want to make things consumer simple, but enterprise secure. So the same kind of experience you get by buying a, a premium product as a consumer, but with all the kind of governance and security, um, you know, and uh, that you would get, you know, from an enterprise uh, environment. Um, next thing on there is Cloud Health. Uh, cloud Health Health helps you manage cloud costs. Looks at things like usage and efficiency. 
Um, and the way that you pay for Cloud Health is that you pay for it as a percentage of the savings that you make from using Cloud Health. So, again, a bit, a bit of a no-brainer one that from me. You, you pay for the product or the service with the savings that you, as, as a fraction of the percentage of savings you make from using the service. Um, next one here, I think this is going to be another big one next year, is Wavefront. This is application monitoring, uh, where we can monitor application health, things like response times, latency, bottlenecks, dependencies. The thing that's good about Wavefront is it focuses more on the end user experience um, and the health of the application, rather than focusing on the underlying health of the infrastructure. So most monitoring tools look at things like CPU and RAM and disk and network and make an assumption that if the hardware is performing correctly, the application is. This kind of turns it on its head and does it the other way around. It looks at the application purely from an application performance and user experience point of view and cares less about what the hardware is doing underneath, just why an application is performing well or is performing badly. And it also includes an SDK or software development kit for doing custom app integration. So if you want to put some little markers or flags in your application where you can tell us, I'm about to do a database query, and then things like I've got the first row back, I've now done this, I've now done that, we can show you in that monitoring exactly what the application is doing at any point in time, either by using the built-in stuff or you by you giving us hints in the code as what part you're doing next. So. Um, as I say, works out the box, but if your developers can can hook into us, we can actually give you a whole end-to-end -end version of how that application is performing with things like latency and timeouts and, and basically giving you the granularity to find out exactly where the problem is or exactly why your application is not performing the way you expected it to. So next thing on there is Pulse IoT. The... Um, uh, and it's a way of monitoring, managing, patching, and updating, updating millions of Internet of Things or IoT devices from one central console. Um, so this is one of the few exceptions where we do do something outside of our normal vSphere or vCenter management platform. Uh, the simple reason for this is that Pulse IoT can manage millions and millions of devices, and it's just not possible to get that kind of scalability in a in you know other products which are used to managing tens or hundreds of servers it was decided that to make this thing ultimately scalable it would break off from the traditional vCenter approach and it would be a dedicated set of applications and services and again d not specifically aimed at doing things with the data from IoT devices but more about managing patching and updating the devices themselves so that you've always got security and governance of the devices so again it's not a data tool it's a management of iot devices tool so next thing on there when we move on to connect is nsx and nsx is our software defined networking or sdn product um NSX can do a whole number of things, but the things that you'll hear about more than, more than anything are things like layer two over layer three. So stretching networks between data centers in a sensible way or a way that IT and network teams are happy with because it's easy to stretch a network, but it's difficult to do it in a way that doesn't cause problems with collisions um, and outages. Some people refer that as data center bridging, so the ability to have one flat network between sites and have a common set of IP addresses and ranges and VLANs across multiple sites without any of the difficulties normally involved in stretching them. We can also do things like distributed switching, distributed routing, load balancing, hardware abstraction, policy-driven networking and security. And any time you see policy-driven, you know that that means um, reduction in the amount of time to do things consistency and minimizing human errors because once you're policy driven and you tell us what you want it takes away that human error part of it and the other part about policy driven is um, it's easier to demonstrate or show to an auditor or somebody else what the policy is actually doing it's much easier to read a human readable policy than it is to look at a, a list of firewall rules so that was um, NSX again could talk for a very long time about NSX does, does lots and lots of things um, VelaCloud is one of those other things we talk about along with NSX and that's software defined one or software defined wide area networking and that product will optimize and accelerate one or more one connections or internet connections or MPLS connections into a single high performance um, application aware network or even a mesh of networks 
Um, so in, in, in simple, it improves performance and reduces cost. So it can either improve the performance of the lease lines or the connections and the broadband ADSL or MPLS connections you've got. Um, and it can also reduce cost because going forward, you might not need as expensive internet connections or lease lines, or you might find that you can just do with an internet connection rather than an MPLS. So again, you know, software defined wide area networking. Next one in there is AVI networks. So this is what the industry calls an ADC or application delivery controller. Um, essentially that's a, a load balancer that works at a global level. It load balances things at a country or data center level rather than most people's version of a load balancer which just ba which balances which web server or which virtual machine or which container. So most load balancers work within the same data center just on different virtual machines or containers or application servers. AVI and its global load balancing operates at almost at an internet level and it directs you to the right country or data center so it's a layer above normal load balancing so that's that now complements the load balances we've already got in nsx um, it also contains a waf or a web application firewall again a similar kind of thing that that's um, provided by other content delivery networks or other um, web web service providers um, and that will also complement as i said before nsx and vela cloud um, next one on there is VMware HCX or the VMware Hybrid Cloud Connect or Hybrid Cloud Acceleration. Lots of people have different names for it, but I think uh, I think the original one is the is the Hybrid Cloud Connect. Um, it works between any combination of on-premise uh, data centers or cloud data centers. It can do things like zero downtime migrations of individual apps, so you literally can move an application from one data center or cloud provider to another data center or cloud provider whilst it's running. It's the equivalent of doing a V motion across data centers and clouds. Um, so we can do that um, zero downtime on individual apps or we can do things like bulk migrations of hundreds of apps. So when you do a bulk migration, there generally is a small amount of downtime. It's not a live one like a vMotion. But if you want to move on a, an industrial scale, you know, tens or hundreds of apps at once, HCX is the tool to do that. Um, interesting announcement is that it also works to Hyper-V. So if you want to move directly from Hyper-V to another VMware platform or cloud provider, you can do that in one uh, motion or one iteration with VMware HTX. Uh, next thing we're going to show is NSX again. The reason we got NSX twice is it's both networking and security. So in this instance, it fits under the protect. So when NSX does software defined security, we have this distributed firewall, integrated antivirus scanning, things like support for intrusion detection and prevention, data loss detection and prevention, plus other th things which we call third party service insertion. That basically just means if you want to do something more intensive like uh, deep packet inspection or layer seven um, packet inspection, we can steer traffic from the NSX platform to a virtual machine or a physical appliance through even more um, security and integration in there. So it's the kind of thing you might see somebody doing with a with a Palo Alto device where certain bits of traffic are sent off for even more thorough investigation. Also find that in healthcare environments where sometimes they've got to use legacy operating systems, if they have to use an operating system which is beyond its usable life or is no longer getting security updates, sometimes the only caveat there is for using that application is if it goes through a third party security appliance rather than connected directly to the network or other devices. So that's that's kind of what we mean by third party service insertion. It just means that other vendors have products and solutions which can be integrated with NSX. Next one there is Network Insight. Uh, this is visibility and analysis of all network traffic, whether that's physical or virtual. Um, we can do things like application dependency mapping, so we can see which applications talk to which other applications on which ports or protocols. You can probably imagine that that's really useful for doing a cloud migration or a data center migration. If we know which applications talk to each other, we know how often, uh, how much traffic, the, the frequency, the latency, that makes it much easier to decide how to move things to a hybrid cloud or a public cloud. Um, it also tells you things around what your firewall rules should look like because we already know what should be talking to what on which ports and protocols. 
We can do things like security monitoring. We can do things like automated firewall rule generation. So we can say, we, we watch this application and we think these are the rules that you should be using. Would you like to apply these? Uh, we can do things like micro segmentation, where we can provide what is essentially a software firewall wrapped around every single virtual machine or container, but done in such a way that no um, virus or malware can turn it off because it's not running in the operating system uh, and that it's not got an attack surface like a firewall would do because you can't get to it. So we've, we've effectively got um, a firewall um, which is filtering traffic or firewalling traffic but it can't be accessed from the outside world because it's running in the hypervisor not, not as a physical appliance and it can't be accessed from the hop operating system because it's not running internally as an agent. So um, micro segmentation one of the major use cases for NSX uh, over the last couple of years um, that kind of security and micro segmentation allows you to do things like zero trust networks it helps with things like compliance so if you've, if you've got issues around PCI DSS HIPAA or SOX or any other kind of compliance NSX can not only help you meet that but it can also help you um, do governance and reporting on where you stand and if things have, have come out of tolerance um, so that was that part on that. The next one there is App Defense. Uh, this is application security using heuristic and behavioral analysis. Uh, and again, this is not a, it is an add-on product, but not an add-on agent or appliance or anything else. Um, basically, it's a plugin for vSphere that communicates with a cloud-based threat monitoring service. So the intelligence for this is in the cloud, but it works as just a plugin to vSphere. So no agents to install, no extra appliances or anything else to configure. It is just the case of uh, enabling this um, at the hypervisor level. Um, it uses something called an application manifest, which can be used to either specifically learn the expected behavior um, for this application, or it can be created by the end user or the customer to describe the expected behavior of the application. And basically, once we've learnt what normal or good behavior is, we are then just looking for changes in that. So that's why it's heuristic or behavioral. We're not looking for tens of millions or hundreds of millions of different antivirus signatures. We're looking for the way the application behaves so that we can spot security problems before virus signatures are available. So if you think about WannaCry, which hit the, the UK National Health Service, uh, WannaCry hit at around 11 o'clock in the morning um, and within half an hour, maybe 45 minutes, had, had crippled most um, organizations that it had infected, yet the antivirus signatures only appeared at 8 o'clock at night. So there was a delay of 9 hours between the virus or the ransomware hitting enterprises and the antivirus vendors having a signature ready. So um, it, it's a different way of doing antivirus and security and it works on behavior and heuristics, not signatures, which can only ever be generated after the virus or the malware uh, as as done its um done its work at scale um the next thing we've got on here is secure state uh, and this allows you to identify and visualize the health and security of all your applications data centers and clouds in a single view um this is integrated as part of the cloud health offering um, um so that again is just a, another feature or functionality that's um you know a, a product in itself but it's part of the cloud health suite and then Carbon Black, we've talked about this before, next generation security, um, and it delivers security right from the workload or the virtual machine through the entire application right up to the endpoint or user's device. Um, and it either works uh, natively inside the hypervisor or sometimes with a lightweight user agent. Um, and all of this works with the cloud security services and again, you know, heuristics and behavioral. So uh, Carbon Black, um, we acquired Carbon Black just recently, um, but they had been all along the heuristics and the cloud technology we'd been using uh, inside App Defense. So we like the company so much, we bought it. So um, a lot of information to take in there, but I get asked quite often what all these different products do and where they fit in. Um, if you're watching this detailed video, I would imagine it's because you actually wanted a bit more information on this. Um, I'm going to show you another slide here which is basically how we've acquired or built these products because sometimes we've built them sometimes if we have acquired them again spend a little bit of time on this slide um, so what you'll see on that slide is Nicera this is the company we bought uh, that we used to create NSX 
Um, Cisco also wanted to buy them at the time. Uh, the only reason I'm mentioning this is just to show you how highly regarded they are. That uh, you know, whilst VMware and Citrix are, are both trying to acquire the same company, it just gives you some indication of uh, how well thought of they are in the industry. Um, AirWatch. Uh, the world's leading mobile device management platform. Um, again, so highly respected that Microsoft built AirWatch technology into Windows 10 just before we acquired them. So again, another acquisition. Um, VelaCloud is another acquisition. Uh, acquisition world leading SD1 or software defined when uh, one. It was another company that Cisco was also uh, bidding to buy along with VMware. And again, just mentioning that because it just gives some credibility around you know. Um, how highly respected they are in the industry. Um, next one there is Cloud Corio, which is um, continuously scanning cloud environments, looking for vulnerabilities uh, for known exploits. That's used in various VMware security products now. Um, so the technology is used in other products. I don't believe that Cloud Corio is available as a product. We've just taken the intellectual property and the technology inside that and built it into our own products. Um, Cloud Velox. Uh, workload migrations between clouds. Uh, I believe that that's part of the functionality that was added into VMware HCX to allow the Hyper-V migrations to take place where we're not only moving from one data center to another but we're all co also converting from one type of hypervisor to another. Next one on there is E8 Security which is user and user device analytics and we use that to establish a user risk level for access control in the Workspace ONE intelligence platform. So again, um, technology and know-how that we've acquired to bolster the capabilities of Workspace ONE in the you know intelligence or the, the risk uh, level that we use, it, uh, sorry, the risking and the weighting that we use in Workspace ONE intelligence. Um, next one on there is Dell EMC Service Assurance Suite. This applies more to telco providers, but it's network service assurance for telco providers. Um, cloud Health, again, another acquisition. Visibility across all clouds, whether that's private, hybrid, and public for cost and resource optimization. It's another example of a company that we like so much we acquired them. Um, VMware used Cloud Health extensively when running VMworld. Um, when we moved from running VMworld on service to cloud providers, Cloud Health did such a good job of saving us money that we decided that that would be an acquisition we should make. Um, Heptio talked about this earlier. This is a world-class Kubernetes organization started by two of the original founders of Kubernetes. That's Joe Bader and Craig McLucky. So literally a company um, started, uh, sorry, a company that helps people with Kubernetes started by two of the original founders of Kubernetes. Again, now integrated into VMware, that's where a lot of our Kubernetes and container capabilities have come from, but but also, you know, know-how. Um, and, uh, you know, again, a, a whole group of people around that company as well. Uh, Bitnami, a uh, world-leading uh, cross-platform application packaging and application catalog. Again, the easiest way to explain this is like it's an app store for clouds. I would imagine most people are already aware of Bitnami. It is one of the easiest ways to deploy applications and services on uh, Amazon Web Services natively. So lots of people are familiar with this just because they've used it before for other things. But again, that's a new VMware acquisition. The other one I talked about before, Bitfusion, where we virtualize graphics cards or GPUs in one set of servers for use um, anywhere across the organization or in other servers or clouds. And I expect that will be used mainly for things like artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, another acquisition again, Yuhana, artificial intelligence based analytics. Uh, and that provides mobile network operators the abil ability to generate actionable insights from 4G and 5G radio networks. So again, more of a mobile and network operations, but again, it's about um, intelligence and, and an insights from that intelligence. Avi Networks, global load balancing and web application firewalling. Some the terms used in the industry for this is application delivery controllers, ADCs or WAFs, web application firewalls, and it operates more um, at data center and cloud level, not necessarily at virtual machine level or container level like most other load balancers. So in summary, it's a you know it's what you might call a global load balancer, not a local load balancer. Um, next one on there is uh, Veriflow. Um, eliminates outages and vulnerabilities at the network level. So again, 
know-how intellectual property again integrated into a number of vmware products uh, pivotal cloud platform hosting and consultancy services um, and more recently you know here things around pivotal container services uh, or pks just need to point out here that it's a k not a c so you'd expect pivotal container service to be pcs but it's pks because the k uh, is in the containers stands for kubernetes so it's pivotal container services but with a c uh, with a k not a c as a little nod to kubernetes um that's something that some of the other cloud providers started doing uh, and we've kind of followed suit with it but it, i must admit it doesn't it doesn't make sense at first reading um if you're not aware of the in joke um, next one, Carbon Black, next generation security, delivering security from the virtual machine through the entire application stack right up to the end user's device. Um, and that's either done with a single lightweight agent or done natively inside the hypervisor or any of the other VMware products. Um, I believe that that product will be shipped um, or a form of that product will be shipped on all Dell um, end user devices or endpoint devices going forward from 2020 so rather than a traditional antivirus or security tool i believe that carbon black will be the one that dell is shipping on all client devices going forward not confirmed but I, i've heard that from a couple of different places so again that's a history of um how we've either built it or acquired it again detail for those people that want it and then quite a scary slide next this is the um how would you phrase this almost like an everything on the truck um this is kind of a visual representation of all the stuff vmware works on or has to sell or deploys you probably want to pause the video at this point but just to say that if you look in the very bottom left hand corner where we've got vSphere and just the the new integration of bitfusion um but vSphere and vCenter server for many organizations vCenter and vCenter Ser sorry vSphere and vCenter server are the only products that people are aware of from VMware so um surprises a lot of people i think the last time i counted there were around 64 different products and services available from VMware but most people only know us for the hypervisor um it's one of the reasons why it's important to have a good partner to work with or you know alternatively it's a it's another good reason why you should be talking to vmware strategically rather than tactically because if you talk to us tactically we'll tell you which particular product on that list will do a certain job but if you talk to us strategically we'll help you with you know how we can help you as a business or as an organization rather than just put a sticking plaster over one particular problem as i said it might be worth pausing um, at that point in the video and just having a look through some of that um, other things, and I'm going to whiz through these a little bit quicker now because I've talked about it in other videos, we're doing lots of integration and, and working with people you would normally regard as our competitors, but we're doing this for the customer's benefit. You'll also see that with our VMware Cloud Foundation, our software stack that we run in our data centers and cloud providers, this is something that does software defined compute, storage, networking, and security. That same software stack that most organizations run in their own data centers now, that's also available running on Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, IBM Cloud, and Oracle. And what that simply means is, you can run a consistent set of applications and services or virtual machines and containers across pretty much all the major cloud providers and your own data centers and you can move them backwards and forwards at will without having to re-engineer or uh, recreate or redevelop any of your applications we give you a single consistent layer that spans on-premise hybrid and public cloud without you having to re-architect your applications so if you're looking for the cloud consumption model or cloudy capabilities but you don't want to have to rewrite your entire application portfolio again vmware cloud foundation is the easiest way to do that and as i say we, we, we work with all major cloud providers so you can buy um, vmware cloud technologies from aws running on aws hardware from microsoft running on microsoft cloud hardware from google running on google cloud hardware from ibm and oracle and another 4300 partners to boot and just in simple terms that cloud foundation is you know to, to summarize it really software defined compute storage network security automation all wrapped up in a single um software bundle that can be deployed 
by yourself on premise, by VMware in the cloud, or by VMware partners in the cloud. And just that thing I talked about before, where I said that globally, VMware have 700 million workloads globally as a combination of virtual machines and containers. Of that 70 million VMs and containers, 10 million of those are already running in the VMware cloud. Um, that's news to most people. And just in pure numbers, VMware and VMware partners have more data centers worldwide than Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and IBM combined. So I would imagine that those organizations have more ser servers in total, but as far as number of data centers, VMware have over 10,000 data centers worldwide in over 128 countries with over 4,300 partners. And of those 4,300 partners, 88 of those are VMware Cloud Verify partners, which is the highest level of certification available for a cloud partner. So this is not our first rodeo. We uh, we actually have quite a lot of stuff running in the cloud. There's just not many people know about it yet. So the other things you saw coming out of VMworld was uh, AVI Networks. Talked about that before. That is um, global load balancing and web application firewall. That fits into the existing products that we've already got for NSX and VelaCloud. So things like switching, routing, firewalling, application delivery controllers, load balancers, web application firewalls, service mesh in NSX, and then things like cloud connectivity, routing, security, and access control in VelaCloud. So that's just another feature that fits into that set of networking and security products. Carbon Black, next generation um, security, end-to-end uh, -end security, all the way from the workload on the hypervisor to the through the application to the endpoint device itself, whether that's a desktop, laptop, um, you know, or a mobile device like a tablet or a smartphone. Um, that was that acquisition that I talked about. It was part of uh, App Defense, now um, a whole product in its own right as part of the VMware portfolio. Bitnami, the Enterprise Application Catalog. Again, many people will be familiar with this. Again, the thing to take home from this is any environment, any format, any platform. There's a pattern form in here. We're just trying to make it as easy as possible to deliver IT with, but taking the complexity of the infrastructure underneath and any of those compatibility problems away. Um, other major announcement was Project Pacific. In simple terms, this is a way for IT to be able to provide virtual machines, containers, and Kubernetes um, to a developer. So IT see it as vSphere and a traditional vSphere environment that can do containers. Developers see it as a cloud native application platform where they can talk to it directly as a Docker container or a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, they can do things like use desired state configuration and desired state management. You can use things like Helm charts with Kubernetes to describe how you would like it to operate. But it's essentially the bringing together of the old world and the new world into a single platform that can run virtual machines and cloud native applications, including containers and Kubernetes and a single platform. And that's what we call Project Pacific. It's already in um, beta and in trial with some customers. That will be generally available to every VMware customer or every VMware organization in early 2020. Uh, the other thing that came out of VMworld and the other thing you'll see going forward is VMware Tanzu. Tanzu is not an actual product. It's a family name for products that do things like um, build, run, and manage applications. So underneath Tanzu, there are these distinct categories, the, the three probably most prominent ones being build, run, and manage, but also we've got connect and protect in there as well. But uh, as I said, Tanzu is not a product, it's a family of things, uh, or family of uh, ways of build, running, and managing applications. So not enough time in this video to talk about all of those, uh, but as I say, it's a family, not a product. Um, just kind of coming towards the end now, but what we're basically saying here with all these different options are the options aren't there for you know to make things more complicated to make it more simple. We give you the option of buying the infra infrastructure yourself and managing it yourself, or allowing VMware to manage it on cloud in a cloud environment, or one of the VMware partners to manage it in a cloud environment. So wherever you want this, whether whether that's VMware Cloud Foundation or Tanzu, you can have that any way you want, and you make a decision as to whether you're going to manage it, VMware are going to manage it, or a partner are going to manage it. And of course, there's also arguments there with, you know, you can make decisions around CapEx and OpEx by 
by you know slicing and dicing those options. The promise for doing that is that we'll give you consistent infrastructure for VMs and containers and consistent operations for management and automation and that we can do it in a way that's simple and easy. So instead of having to build silos um, of applications and services in proprietary formats with any of those major cloud providers, we can give you a way of building that in a way which is compatible across all of those cloud providers and compatible with your on-premise VMware environments now. So in, in simple terms, it's the easy button. It allows you to move from on-prem to hybrid cloud, to public cloud, to another public cloud, to another public cloud, and then back again if you wanted to. We just we turn everything into a single consistent platform and you decide based on your know, kind of cost or economics or location where you want it to run. But we've solved the compatibility problem with the VMware multi-cloud strategy. And that's why, in summary, we say we can deliver any application to any device from any cloud with intrinsic security. And that's what we've been saying from 2013 to 2020, um, what we describe as the essential ubiquitous uh, ubiquitous digital foundation, and I've added the the, the type there, which is you know th that it comes with built with intrinsic security at all layers. Um, I just felt that was missing from the slide that we probably don't mention that enough because for most organizations security is an afterthought or something that's bolted on or done by a separate team it's very important to us at vmware that this is intrinsic and it's at all layers not just individual layers so that was the extremely detailed version of the short version um, but specifically for those people who wanted to know more about individual products and applications and services and whether we built them or acquired them or where it fits into the bigger story. So thank you very much for your time. I hope you found that useful.